Excellent. Welcome back, minions. We are here at RLM Amusements. This is my new friend. Introduce yourself. I'm Rodney. Rodney. And RLM Amusements, it's pinballs and arcade video games. That is correct. And and you're hidden away here in Plainfield Avenue. Uh, how long have you been here? How long has this business been here? Uh, about four years now. About four years. And you not only have it open to play all these fine games, but you also restore games? Yeah, it's a large part of what I do is I fix pinball machines and arcade games. I do in-home repairs. Customers can drop their games off here for repair. And then the arcade is open to the public a couple days a week. So Excellent. Excellent. And then how did you get interested in repairing video games, uh, pinball games? Uh, in the late 90s, uh, when I bought my first house, that's when I bought my first game. I was intrigued. I mean, I grew up playing a lot of these games like Tron and Miss Pac-Man and Galaga, Robotron back in the day. And um, I was always intrigued and always wanted to own one, but couldn't really until I had my first house. And uh, it was literally one of the first things I moved into the new house when we bought it. Um, but it didn't work, so I had to figure out how to fix it. And I mean, I've been into computers and electronics since I was 12, so it just kind of went hand in hand and taught myself how to fix it. And and, and what game was that? What was your first game? <laughs> it was uh, Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja. Bad Dudes so, versus Dragon Ninja? Wow, yes. there's an obscure one. Uh, <laughs> if my minions have heard of it, uh, uh, let me know because it's... Uh, it was during the Reagan era because yeah, you were trying to save Ronald oh, Reagan. Yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> of course. So you've repaired a lot of games, I imagine. Oh, yeah. What... What game has given you the most trouble, do you think? Like, is there one in particular that, like, you see it and you go, oh, I know I'm going to have to fix that? Is it? Yeah, I mean, there can be a few. I mean, as far as games on my arcade floor here, I would say probably Baby Pac-Man. Baby Pac-Man. Me, yeah, it's Baby giving me Pac-Man. the most. Because it's kind of a, there's only two games that use those same boards and stuff, and it could just be a little, it's a hybrid pinball and arcade game. So yeah. it's got both that can have potential issues. So I would say that one's probably giving me the most headaches here. But and, and do you think it's easier to repair classic pinball games or more modern ones? The, the parts have to be hard to find for the older ones. Uh, it depends. I mean, a lot of them have been reproduced, so they're not too difficult to find. Some of the rarer games that where they didn't maybe make a lot of them, those can be a little bit harder to get parts for. But a majority of the stuff is pretty readily available. Um, most of the older games are pretty, you know, pretty easy to repair. I mean, if you know what you're doing, um, the newer games, you know, everything's computers based. I mean, it's all surface mount components. So they're easier to work on right now because they don't break, right. you know, other than a few mechanical issues or rubbers here and there. Um, but once the circuit boards go bad, those are harder to work on without the right equipment than the older stuff. Okay. So, all right. Uh, and you don't you don't do anything like skee ball or any of those other arcade games. It's no like pinball and pinball and arcade. We do have a full commercial size air hockey table, uh, but no skee ball. Yeah. So maybe in the future. But. That's all right. <laughs> That's right. You also have a lap of Zoltar. You can be forgiven. For yeah, that. I would love you know, a Zoltar. <laughs> Zoltar is great. Uh, uh, so uh, you started with one game in your house. Yeah. I'll be honest. How many games do you actually own for yourself right now? Well, that's hard to say. I mean, it kind of all messed it when I opened this place. I basically, I used to have a home arcade. Um, I had probably like 30 machines at home. Um, but once I opened this, I brought a lot of those came here and went on the floor. I sold some to buy others. So it's the, the collection's constantly changing. Is there one you would never part with? Never part. Well, I always tell everybody, everything's for sale for the right price. Okay. So I know you're hiding the creature from the Black Lagoon pinball down here somewhere. Yeah, it's so. it'll be out on the floor soon. Yeah, you know? that's, that's one that I've always, that's always a great one. coveted. That's great with the little 3D image. Yup, the hologram in the bottom. Yeah. Yes. So you're open a couple days a week. I yep. understand Thursdays and Saturdays. Yep. Thursdays five to one a.m. and Saturdays noon to ten. And you have, you have tournaments and you, yes. you broadcast those on Twitch. We sure do. Yes. So so tell our viewers uh, where they can. Find you on Twitch? Yeah, twitch.tv slash RLM Amusements. We stream every Thursday night starting at 7 p.m. And it usually goes till about 1 or 2 a.m. So, And, and how about, how, how many people can you accommodate for those events? For the tournaments? 
Uh, we technically can fit about 60 to 70 people in here for the tournaments. Excellent. Our average turnout for our tournaments is between, like, in the high 20s to the, like, high 30s, somewhere around there. Okay. So okay. it kind of fluctuates depending on, you know, the season and the weather and things like that. So, so this is this is a kind of a, a dream from when you were a kid. Oh, yeah, for sure. for sure. And uh, it's... It's fantastic, and I want more people to know that you're here so that they can come and enjoy it. What do you want to see happen with this in the future? Where, where do you want to take this? Or you're not, you're not going to be complacent and just keep it, everything. No, like I mean, this. eventually we'd like to build it, make it bigger, open up to the other side and make it, you know, instead of 2,500 square foot, be a 5,000 square foot arch. Sure. Be open more days a week, and that's all on the horizon. So that's in the in the future plans. So. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, anything else you would like to? Oh, I I was going to talk to you about this. Sorry. So, just because you're an arcade man, mm -hmm. I want to see how many how many live action films you can name based on arcade video games. Live action film, oh, man. There's, you're gonna... there's more than a few. Um, let's see here. Well, Street Fighter. Street Fighter. Um, Pix well, I guess the Pixel's really uh, yeah, no, Not really. Cloak and Dagger. Cloak and Dagger. Um, <clears throat> oh, geez. We're, so we're saying only arcade, correct? Yes. Okay. Um. Mortal Kombat. Yeah, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, Street Fighter. Um, oh, jeez, I'm drawing a blank here. All right, we're going to help you out a little bit. Double Dragon. Oh, yeah, Double Dragon. Super Mario. Oh, it's, oh, of course. I'm looking right at one. Yeah, I should have known that one. Yep. How many others can you think of? Oh man. See, I'm getting old. My uh, yeah. my memory is not what it used to be. And then there's then there's <laughs> movies that are are based on video game concepts, but not on any particular video game. Sure. And you have one I've actually surprisingly I've never heard of. Back there, you have a poster uh, for uh, Pinball. Oh, Pinball Summer. Pinball Summer, yes. which. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, That's yeah, great. you got to check it out. That's oh, great. I know of the game. I'm totally forgetting Tron. Tron, of course, of course. the most course. classic of all. Yeah, yes. well, and that, that was the simultaneous <laughs> release of game and yeah, game. Exactly. So yep. That was good marketing. That business. Oh, for sure, for sure. Back when they used to know how to market stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's that's neither here nor there. Um, weird little question that goes with that is what game would you? you've always wanted to see made into a film that's mm -hmm. never been done. Well, a pinball machine that I think, I'm surprised has never been made, is Phantasm. Yes! Like, it, oh, it, like yes. the silver, I mean, the spheres, the balls, I mean, it yeah. lends itself to pinball so well. Like, I'm shocked it's never, and the other one I'd love to see, I always wanted to see, I thought Creep Show would be a great theme yes. for. I mean, I have, you know, they have Tales from the Crypt. Yes, my, my good friend, John Cassier. Yes, there. yes. Yeah. So that's a great machine, but yeah, like, those are the two. Phantasm and Creep Show would be, like, my two, my two that I'd love to see made into a pinball machine. So what about going the other way and taking a video game or pinball machine and making a movie oh. of that? Oh, interesting. Um... I ask all the tough questions. Yeah, I'm trying to think what would be a good, theme, like an original theme yeah. pinball machine. Because that's the thing, they don't really make original themes anymore. It's Not, all based on commercial licenses yeah, that's, for the most so, part. So, so it, had, part. it had to go back a little bit yep. to like the 80s or like, 70s. Dig um, Dug and... Yeah. Cuber. <laughs> oh, you're okay. Yeah, you're, so we're saying arcade games. Yeah. yeah. So not pinball necessarily. Or pinball too. Or arcade. There were, um, there were a couple classic pinballs that would. Robotron, I think, would be a, could be yeah. a fun movie transition. Yeah. You know, you try to save your family. Or, or Carnival. So, oh, man. I haven't thought about that. Yep. Yeah, that's a, that's a fun game. Yeah. Could be a good one. Um, geez. Metal Slug. Metal Slug. Metal Slug. That could be a cool Metal. movie. Everyone at home, repeat after me. <laughs> Metal Slug. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. We're going to go play some games now. All right. And we encourage everybody. Tell us once again where you're located. Yeah, RLM Amusements, 4318 Plainfield Avenue, Northeast. Website is rlmamusements.com. And again, we're open every Thursday, 5 to 1 a.m., Saturdays, noon to 10. And the best part is... It's $10 per person. Everything's on free play. You can play as long as you want, all day. So outside food and beverages are allowed as well. So it's a great deal. Hope to see you soon. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.